Hi everyone is my first video and I cannot for the life of me figure out how this app sucks so I apologize if this video is complete trash. While watching BTS's MAMA, MMA, and GDA solo stages and the recent VCRs, I noticed a couple of interesting things which I thought I would share with you guys. Now, I'm no genius like Namjoon and if what I say sounds like complete bullshit, I'm sorry for wasting your time. But can I just say, I was a little proud of myself for making a few connections like damn I wish I paid this much attention and was this focused in school. Anyways, back to the video. I know many people have already made a lot of videos on this but this is just my take and perspective on all the content we have gotten so far. So, grab your popcorn and soda and let's start. P.S. I apologize if Daniel completely butchers the pronunciation of a few of the words. Future me here. BTS just announced their comeback and the name of their album, Map of the Soul, and 7 are you kidding me? I feel like such a clown. At first, I was super confused because I was so sure that the album would be called Shadow or Ego but I did a little digging and found some stuff. I will still be talking about the VCRs and everything but we will be keeping this new information in mind. I'm so sorry this video was so rushed and it's all over the place but I hope you guys learned something new. Before we get into the analysis, I think it's important to first understand a few basics of Jungian psychology. Carl Jung believed that the human psyche was composed of three systems that interacted with each other, the ego, the personal conscious, and the collective conscious. The ego represents the conscious mind. The conscious mind consists of everything inside of our awareness. The personal conscious contains memories including those that have been repressed. Jung believed that the collective unconscious contained all of the knowledge and experiences we share as a species. In Jungian psychology, archetypes were models of people, behaviors, or personalities. Archetypes, Jung suggested, were inborn tendencies that play a role in influencing human behavior. The collective unconscious, Jung believed, was where these archetypes exist. He suggested that these models are innate, universal, and hereditary. According to him, archetypes emerge as themes and characters in our dreams and surface in our culture in myths, books, films, and paintings for example. He believed that each archetype played a role in personality. Jung identified four major archetypes, the persona, the shadow, the anima or animus, and the self. The persona is how we present ourselves to the world. The word persona is derived from a Latin word that literally means mask. The persona represents all of the different social masks that we wear among various groups and situations. In the blackboard behind RM in the persona MV, we see the word dream written on top of the word persona. According to Jung, the persona may appear in dreams and take different forms. The persona develops as a social mask to contain all of the primitive urges, impulses, and emotions that are not considered socially acceptable. The persona archetype allows people to adapt to the world around them and fit in with the society in which they live. However, becoming too closely identified with this archetype can lead people to lose sight of their true selves. The shadow is an archetype that consists of the sex and life instincts. The shadow exists as part of the unconscious mind and is composed of repressed ideas, weaknesses, desires, instincts, and shortcomings. The shadow forms out of our attempts to adapt to cultural norms and expectations. It is this archetype that contains all of the things that are unacceptable not only to society, but also to one's own personal morals and values. It might include things such as envy, greed, prejudice, hate, and aggression. This archetype is often described as the darker side of the psyche, representing wildness, chaos, and the unknown. Jung suggested that the shadow can appear in dreams or visions and may take a variety of forms. It might appear as a snake, a monster, a demon, a dragon, or some other dark, wild, or exotic figure. Hum. Now what about the many snakes we have seen in the VCRs and Dionysus performances? On the cover of Make It Right as well as in the music video, there is also a dragon. The anima is a feminine image in the male psyche, and the animus is a male image in the female psyche. The anima animus represents the true self rather than the image we present to others and serves as the primary source of communication with the collective unconscious. According to Jung, the animus represents the masculine aspect in women while the anima represented the feminine aspect in men. The self is an archetype that represents the unified unconsciousness and consciousness of an individual. 
Creating the self occurs through a process known as individuation, in which the various aspects of personality are integrated. Jung often represented the self as a circle, square, or mandala. Okay now that we know a bit about Jungian psychology, let's dive into the analysis. By this point, it is quite clear that the guys represent Greek gods but there is still some confusion around who represents which god. Looking at all of their VCRs and performances, the guys seem to represent the 12 Olympians, who were considered to be the major deities of the Greek pantheon. The 12 Olympians were, Zeus, Poseidon, Ras, Hera, Aphrodite, Athena, Apollo, Hephaestus, Artemis, Dionysus, Hermes and Demeter. Out of these, seven were males, Zeus, Poseidon, Ras, Apollo, Hephaestus, Dionysus, and Hermes. Almost all of us can agree that Namjoon represent Dionysus. He always carries the Thesis, which is a scepter that was carried by Dionysus. Dionysus was the Greek god of wine, grape cultivation, fertility, ritual madness, theater, and religious ecstasy. He was believed to be the son of Zeus and Persephone. At the MMA performance, Jin seemed to represent Raz. The god of war this can be seen as his solo stage consisted of him entering riding a horse and the warlike music that played in the background. His dance moves seemed to be quite angry and aggressive as well. Being the god of war, Raz represents the physical and violent aspect of war. However, in the GDA VCR, Jin seems to represent Aphrodite he is holding pearls and there is a sea behind him, both of which are symbols of Aphrodite. An interesting link between Aphrodite and Raz is that they were having an affair behind Aphrodite's husband. Hephaestus is back. So, it's interesting that Jin would represent both Raz and Aphrodite. If we connect this to Jungian psychology, Jin could actually represent two aspects of his personality, the more masculine side, which is represented by Raz, and the feminine side, which is represented by Aphrodite. We know that the anima is the unconscious feminine side of a man and it is also part of the shadow. Now, Jungi's VCRs and MMA performance pointed to the fact that he could represent Hephaestus, the god of fire. I mean, the guy even had fire as the song for his solo stage. Hephaestus was also the god of blacksmiths, metalworking and carpenters and young can be seen drinking from a chalice made of metal or something similar. While many think that the liquid in the chalice represents wine, I think it could be the nectar that the gods drank to remain immortal. I don't know why but this reminds of the blood seat and tears music video when the guys are sitting at the table with their chalices. I seems to represent temptation? I'm not exactly sure. Just a thought. There are many theories regarding which god Hobie could represent. Many believe that it's Dionysus because of the fact that he was holding grapes, which are a symbol of him. I think he could represent Hermes. Hermes was the messenger of the gods and often flew to deliver messages. The sky behind him could be representative of the fact that he flies. There is a sculpture of Hermes called Hermes of Praxitals with the infant Dionysus. While many parts of the statue were ruined due to an earthquake, it is believed that Hermes was holding grapes in his right hand. Another interesting point is that Hermes was also the god of trickery and deception. In the HYYH era, we know that Hobie was diagnosed with Manchorsen syndrome, an illness in which a person feigns being sick. Seems like deception. No, Jimin, I think, represents Zeus. The first point sounds pretty far-fetched but hear me out. Jimin's solo dance at MMA seemed so graceful and light, almost as if he was dancing on air. In the GDA VCR, Jimin is seen standing in front of a waterfall with snakes on his head. His outfit also looks very regal. How is this related to Zeus? It is believed that Zeus used to present himself in the form of a snake, and the waterfall behind him? That could be the bath of Zeus, a waterfall on Mount Olympus where the Greek gods bathed. Tay seems to represent Apollo, the god of light, arts, music, and poetry. There was another god who represented the sun, Helios. It is believed that Apollo and Helios actually became one and came to be known as Phobos. In the GDA VCR, we see Tay wearing a crown of sorts which represented the rays of the sun. This was also worn by Helios. In the GDA VCR, Tay was the only one surrounded by the night sky. It seems as if he is in space. This also connects to his scene in the Speak Yourself VCR. He was in a dark place, almost like a basement. He seemed to represent the shadow, with the whole dark and gloomy atmosphere and when he touched the light bulb, it seemed to symbolize the shadow coming to light. 
This was also reiterated when there was a great light shining in front of him and illuminating him. Fascinatingly, Apollo was also the god of prophecies and we know that in the BU, Te could tell the future from his dreams. So we can find a connection to dreams. According to Jung, dreams reveal more than what they conceal and he saw them as the psyche's attempt to communicate important things to the individual. BTS announced their comeback on the 7th of January. The number 7 is sacred to Apollo, the god Te seems to represent. On the 7th of every month sacrifices were offered to him and his festivals usually fell on the 7th of a month. Jung wrote a collection of seven texts called Seven Sermons to the Dead. According to Jung, God is part of our soul. In the fourth sermon, there is a quote which reads, Blessed am I, for it is granted unto me to know the multiplicity and diversity of the gods. I will quote a few paragraphs from a book in order to explain this. In this multiplicity of gods or, as the Gnostic would have it, divine emanations, there are two which in the sermons form the first pair of deities, God the Son, or Helios, and his opponent, the devil. Human life and experience ever plays itself out between the tension of two opposites, God and devil, fighting heroes and villainous dragons. Fratricidal Cain and murdered Abel are all representatives of the recurring motifs depicting symbolically the interaction of the opposing dualities. In the second sermon Jung is concerned with the existence of a primal dichotomy within the psyche, a dichotomy which is united by a mysterious reconciling power of existential activity, named by Jung on the Basilidian model as Abraxas. According to Jung, moral opposites are as much a part of the process of growth toward wholeness as are opposites of another character. The self of Jung's psychology belongs to a transconscious realm, and therefore is not directly susceptible to conscious cognition. It is rather experienced through its good and evil emanations. The former of these might appear as the light and rectitude of the accepted values of consciousness, while the latter is the shadow that accompanies the light and acts as the demonic half of the psyche. In the second sermon, Jung mentions Abraxas. He is an important figure and a representation of the driving force of individuation. There is a god about whom you know nothing, because men have forgotten him. We call him by his name, Abraxas. He is less definite than god or devil. Abraxas is activity. Nothing can resist him but the unreal. Abraxas stands above the sun, god, and above the devil if the Pleroma were capable of having a being. Abraxas would be its manifestation. That which is spoken by God the Son is life. That which is spoken by the devil is death. Abraxas speaketh that hallowed and accursed word, which is life and death at the same time. Abraxas begetteth truth and lying, good and evil, light and darkness in the same word and in the same act. Wherefore is Abraxas terrible, as written in the third sermon? Where have we heard Abraxas before? That's right. Several references to the god Abraxas appear in Hermann Hesse's novel Demian, such as. The bird fights its way out of the egg. The egg is the world. Who would be born must first destroy a world. The bird flies to God. That God's name is Abraxas. Recognize this quote. This is what we hear at the beginning of Jin's Awake short film. We know that the Blood, Sweat and Tears music video was based on Demian and in the Wings short films and music videos from the HYYH era as well as the music video of BST itself. It is hinted that T. Hyung represents Abraxas. So is this new comeback going to be like blood sweat and tears but much darker? On to Jungkook. At first, after watching his MMA solo performance, I thought he represented Poseidon, for obvious reasons. But after watching the GDA VCR, I was confused because there was no water or anything. But then, I remembered the Speak Yourself VCR. In one scene, Jungkook was shown making a butterfly with his hands, whose shadow then appeared on the wall. Four shadows to be exact. According to Jung, a butterfly is a symbol of transformation. It is an archetypal image of the psyche. Notice how there are four shadows of the butterfly according to Jung. There were four stages of life. The athlete is the phase in our lives when we are most self-absorbed and least mature. We are obsessed by our physical appearance and that of others. The next phase is the warrior phase this is when we begin to take on responsibilities and become more goal oriented this phase is characterized by the struggle in our lives that early adulthood can throw at us. Third we have the statement phase. We shift our focus from our personal achievements to accomplish goals based on forwarding other people's lives. It calls for more maturity and is a big step forward from the warrior phase. Last is the spirit phase. We realize we are more than what we have accumulated be it money 
friends, possessions, good deeds or milestones in life. We realize that we are divine beings in journey of life that has no beginning and no end. The speak yourself final VCR is divided into four parts. Two does each part signify a stage of life. Let's talk about archetypes now. We know that they emerge as themes and characters in our dreams and surface in our culture in myths, books, films and paintings for example. All of the VCRs had a very dreamlike quality to them and we see several motifs recurring themes and objects in each VCR. For example, in the Speak Yourself VCR, we see Namjoon holding an hourglass and Jungkook and Hobie also have watches. In the GDA VCR, we also see an hourglass in the desert. Another recurring symbol in snakes. We see them in the Dionysus performances as well as the VCRs. We also see a lot of light and shadows. In the Speak Yourself VCR, this is seen when Tay is standing in the dark room with the only source of light being the light bulb, the light flickering on and off when Hobie was on the street, etc. We also see a ton of clocks. Could these signify time passing by? Now, I think the Greek gods are just archetypes that represent the negative qualities of the guys or perhaps the seven sins? I'm not sure but according to me, Apollo signifies wrath. Zeus represents lust. Dionysus gluttony. Herm's greed. Pride Poseidon. Envy Raz. And Hephaestus represents laziness. Not too sure about this part though. Lastly, I want to talk about another possible connection to blood sweat and tears. In the music video, we see a quote from Nietzsche, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. This connects to what Jung said in his second sermon about there existing good and evil in every human being. I will put the quote here again for your reference. Human life and experience ever plays itself out between the tension of two opposites. God and devil. Fighting heroes and villainous dragons. Fratricidal Cain and murdered Abel are all representatives of the recurring motifs depicting symbolically the interaction of the opposing dualities. Future me here again so be I just released everything that will be included with the album and guess what? HYYH. He notes is also included. So, will the story continue from there? If you remember the heartbeat music video, in the end, we see this written. See you there again, where we first met in 2012. We know that the BU storyline starts in 2012. Back to blood sweat and tears the original sin was committed in the Garden of Eden when Eve ate the forbidden fruit in the BSTMV. We see the guys sitting at a table in what looks like a garden with apples on their plates. Apples can be seen as a symbol of temptation so. It looks like they are ready to commit sins this has been echoed in the recent VCRs as well. One of the seven sins can be attributed to each member. Oh, and that's all I have right now. I know this video was all over the place and a little confusing and I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully, Byte will be kinder to us and not drop a bomb out of nowhere but that's too much to ask. I bet Namjoon's crabs that they are laughing their asses off at our clonery right now. Anyways, if we get more hints, Imar make a follow up video so please subscribe, like and share this video with other BTS theory enthusiasts. Also let me know your thoughts and comment any theories you may have.